Selecting by attribute allows you to create a subset of data from a specific layer file for further analyses. For example, I have various layers here. So I've got a boreholes layer, a railway line, a road, farms, land use, and a geology as well. And let's say I'm interested in all the land use that is made of up, up of open space or natural reserves or like parks, something like that. What I would do is I could either right click land use, so open attribute table, go to the table options and say select by attributes. Here I would say land use equals now I'm interested in um, open space or, or, or parks or anything like that. So I would, right, uh, I would click on the thing that I'm interested in, say get unique values and here we are, nature reserves. Here's my SQL statement, land use equals nature reserve, say apply and close it. That is the only thing that actually qualifies in this instance, as you can see. And that is all the land use that is made up of nature reserves within this particular extent. Now the selection is not permanent, it is a temporary layer. So if I would like that to become a temporary layer, I have to export it. To do that, I say right click on the layer that I'm selecting from, say data, export data. I will give it a descriptive name, for example, I would call it nature reserve. Say OK. And it will be added to my map as a layer. And there we are. So this is everything in this particular map extent that equals a nature reserve. But let's say now I want to do a compound query. So I'm not only interested in one attribute, I actually want to know more. So you can do select by attributes on one particular layer um, using multiple fields within that layer. For this example, let's use uh, the farms layer. So we open the attribute layer and here we have got area, we've got perimeter, we've got farm name and the prices. So let's say I would I'm interested in an, a farm of a perimeter that exceeds 222 kilometers, for example, or, or 300 kilometers. So perimeters in here. I know it's in meters. Because if I go to my properties of my farms, you'll just have to give it a moment to, to come up. Um, it will give me the information about the underlying data. But I, let's say I'm interested in the prices, how expensive is the farm, and the perimeter. What is the actual outside extent of the farm? So how do we do that? We can go to the table properties and select by attributes again, or you can go to selection which is one of your main menu options. Go select by attributes. Say that you want to work with farms. I'm interested in a perimeter that is greater than 200. You can just type it in. And a price, let's say, that is, e that is less than 5 million. So I can say and prices that are less than 5 million. So let's have a look if this SQL expression actually works. You say verify or successfully verified. You say apply. And here we have eight, 68 features selected. All right, so all of these have a perimeter that exceeds 200 um, in total kilometers. And it has a price that is less than what I have specified. It's still a temporary layer, so I have to say right click data, export data, give it any suitable name. For example, you can say suitable farm, something like that. Say so, OK, it will be added to your map as a layer. And there we are. So let's say now you're interested in farms that are below a certain um, expense and they're above a certain size and they must also be in a nature reserve or, or must not be in a nature reserve, of course, because this is the nature reserve. You don't want to farm inside that. And you can see that the nature reserve is actually not part of any of the farms. So these farms are actually found all suitable. So that is a simple explanation of how you do select by attributes. The principles are transferable to any kind of situation as long as you apply them properly.